welcome to my art channel. Thanks for stopping by to make some art with me. Um, for more free art lessons, you could press the button below and subscribe right there on that red button. And I will see you really soon. Now let's get to making some art. Bye-bye. Welcome to Mixed Media, I'm Carrie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a collage of the Ming Dynasty vases from China. So let's get our materials together. You're going to need a piece of 9 by 12 mixed media or drawing paper, 8.5 by 11 either drawing paper or printer paper is fine. You will need a scissor, a pencil, magic markers, not permanent markers, it's very important that you use magic markers for this. You will need a glue stick, some water, and a paintbrush, and a paper towel will come in handy. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the outside of the vase. So you're going to need your large 9 by 12 paper. You are going to need a pencil to draw the vase. However, to help you see it, I'm going to draw it in marker. You're going to start with a straight line on the bottom. That line is going to be about four fingers long. Okay, so you could put your hands down and measure one, two, three, four fingers. Okay, mine is a little bit bigger than that and that's fine too. And then we're going to make a roundish shape on either side, like that. It almost looks like a fishbowl right now. Now this shape on the bottom, you want to be able to fit your hand in there because we're going to be drawing a really big dragon in this section. So make sure that that's at least as big as your hand. And if it isn't, you're using pencil so you can erase it, okay? Once you have your bowl shape, we're going to do the neck of the vase which comes in and becomes more narrow. But notice that I'm using these curved lines that come in a little bit, just like that. And then at the top of the vase, you're going to have an oval kind of shape like that. And that's where your flowers are gonna come out of. And we're actually, after you make that oval, we're going to make another oval inside there. The same shape like that. And that looks like the vase has an opening. So this is what your vase should look something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because all the vases and the Ming vases are shaped a little bit differently. This is just a general shape. Once you've finished drawing your vase, we're ready to section it out. And we're going to have about five or six sections. And the main section is going to be down here where this big bowl is. And that's where we're going to draw our dragon. So we're going to need a lot of space. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your hand and put it on the bowl of that vase. And then you're going to draw a line as at least as big as your hand on that across the, the bowl of the vase. So here's the bottom line. And then I'm going to make it like that. Okay, so that's going to be a big enough space for me to put my dragon in. And then from here, I can put in maybe four or five more sections. So I'm going to put in a section um, right under the neck that's a little small. Then I'm going to make a larger section that's, say, three fingers maybe two fingers, one, yeah, two fingers. Okay, so I have one, two, three, and then we're gonna have a tiny section on the bottom like that. So your vase should look something like this with those lines. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna draw the dragon and I'm gonna show you how to draw it step by step. I'm gonna draw it on a larger piece of paper so you could see it better. When we draw our dragon, I want you to imagine um, the paper or the area that you're gonna draw it in on the vase. 
in four sections. So I'm actually going to make a very light pencil mark in the half of my paper going down the half here and then the middle point here. This will help me to know where to place my dragon parts. Because I'm drawing this upside down for you, so it gets a little tricky. Okay, so in our top box here, you're going to draw almost like a V shape that's on its side. And I'm going to have to draw this in in marker. And that's going to be the mouth of the dragon. So once you have that shape on its side, we're going to draw around that mouth part and draw the face of the dragon. So on top of the dragon, he's got a little bump like that. Okay, that's actually for his nostril, for his nose. And then after the bump, we're going to have a little straight line going like that. Now on the bottom of that part of the mouth, we're going to draw a little line going down. And then we're going to imitate this line over here so it looks like that. Okay. From here, we're going to make his head. And that's still in that corner box up here. So his head is going to come up a little bit just a little bit and then go down like that. So it's kind of like a little hook over there. Once you have that head line, we can draw the beginning of his body. So you're going to go into the box below and you're going to make this dip of a line. And then you're going to kind of make like a mountain up here in this box. and then out like that. So you see that? It dips down, it comes up like a mountain, and it dips down again. Just like that. So it's mountains and valleys. So that's what we have so far for our dragon. So to make his body, we are going to follow these lines that we already drew, and we're going to make them underneath to give him a body. So I'm just going to Maybe about three fingers of thickness is going to be my line on the bottom. So you see our dragon is starting to form. Okay. So once you have his body, let's give him some little arms, okay? So the arms are going to go in this space over here, and we're going to attach them. And they're just these little tiny things, but they're sharp sharp claws coming out of them. And you can even add some lines looking like really sharp fingernails. Just like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add his eye and his horns. So his eye is interesting. It's round, but it also looks like it has a flame coming out of it. So we're going to put his eye right here and you did this in pencil so you can erase the lines inside. You're going to make a circle and then you can erase that little line that's inside there in his eye. And then inside that circle you're going to make another circle like that and give him his pupil. And then the interesting thing with the Chinese dragon that's different than other dragons is they have like a lot of flames coming out of their eyes and their horns. So you're going to make just a little flame coming off of his eye. Then we get to do his horn. And his horn is kind of like a flame. And you could make two of them coming off the back of his head. Okay. So now we need to just add some more details, and we're almost done with our dragon. So in his nose over here, we're just going to put a little arched line so you can see that it looks like a nostril. And then we're going to add some teeth, because dragon have sharp teeth. 
and a tongue. And the tongue that the Chinese dragon has is usually like um, split at the end, like that. And we're going to add his underbelly, which looks a little bit different than the top of his than the top of his belly. And we're going to add some line. So I added a line underneath, inside, and I'm just going to add some vertical lines, uh, horizontal lines, all the way down to make it look like his underbelly. Once you have all of his parts drawn in, the last thing we need are to put his uh, dragon spikes. So the spikes of the Chinese dragon are usually more rounded and petal-like, kind of like this. So I'm going to add those all over his back. And your final dragon will look something along the lines of this. And this is the style of the Chinese dragon. So the next thing that we're going to do on, on our vase is we're going to work on the designs that are on the neck. And on the Ming vases in China, a lot of the designs are very um, curvy and floral. So that's the things that we're going to do. So in here, in this big section on the neck, I'm going to show you how to do the long vertical leaves. And the leaves, and again, do this in pencil, and then if you make a mistake, you can erase it. So the leaves actually look, they're long, they're almost like the shape of a finger. So I'm probably going to fit one, two, three leaves in here, just like that. just like that. And then I'm going to put a line down the middle of each of them. And then I'm going to add the veins, more of the veins. And those veins are just diagonal lines, like that. So I'm going to finish putting the diagonal lines in my leaf. And then the neck of your vase will look something like this. Now up here on the top, in the very, just right underneath the lip of the vase, um, you often find on the main vase is a very interesting design, which looks like almost like a square six. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's like um, a box. But instead of closing the box, you're going to go down into a spiral like that. So I'm going to fill that top lid. I'm going to make a line going down, then across, then up, almost like a box, but I'm not going to close the box. I'm going to keep going in a spiral. It's going to look something like that. Okay, and then the next part of our vase down here, we could do something kind of free, like a lot of vines um, and curly cues and very um, delicate looking leaves hanging down. That's often a design that you'll see, something like that. So then we have some, we might have some space down here and we can do something um, very simple. Kind of like little petals almost mirror the shape of the spikes on the back of the dragon just like that and if you have more sections than this keep going fill it out with any designs that you like don't color anything in though we're not coloring anything in right now we're outlining because we're actually going to paint it in and I'm going to show you how to paint in with the magic markers after so while you're working on finishing up your design, I'm going to outline my dragon because he's only in pencil over here. If your drawings are completed on your vase, now what you're going to do is you're going to go back and outline everything with a blue marker. And the reason we're using only a blue marker is because in the 
Ming Dynasty, the vases from that time were done with blue, um, blue glaze on porcelain. So as you see here, I have outlined, I have actually drew my whole thing with blue so you could see it, but you did it in pencil. So now you're going to go over the designs with a blue marker, but notice I didn't color anything in. I just outlined everything. And when you're done outlining, that's when we're going to do a little bit of painting to get an another layer of color. So go back and outline, and I'll be right back. If you're finished outlining, you can go back with an eraser and erase any pencil markings that you want to get rid of. Now is the time because once you paint over it, you won't really be able to erase. So I have some things I want to clean up just inside the dragon. And I think we'll be ready to go. You're going to need uh, some water and your paintbrush for this. So get that ready and I'll show you what we're going to do. The interesting thing about uh, using magic markers is that they're water-based. So when you hit them with a little water, they start to spread out. So instead of using watercolor paints, we're just using the blue and we're going to be able to get different shades of blue just from using one blue. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just go over, let's say I'm going to go start with these leaves here and I'm just going to paint in them and you'll see that just a little bit of water because if you use too much water you'll lose all your lines. Can you see how that's starting to paint in the color? So I'm just going to do this technique in a few areas. I'm not going to do it in all the areas but maybe I want down here, I'm going to add some, some blue, just like that. I can add some blue to the spikes of the dragon. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the water and I'm just hitting the outlines that I drew in blue. And it's making that blue kind of drip down into the space. So just a little bit of water is all you need. And so I could show you a little bit of how he's... Just get a little bit of blue color in there. We'll go ahead now and just add some solid blue, or it's actually not really solid, it's transparent because you could see the lines under it. And just add some blue to your vase. And if there's any areas where the water made the paint kind of run, which happened down here, that's okay, you can just let it dry, and you can go, oh, when it's dry, you can go over it with the marker again. So I'm, I'm not using a really wet brush. Obviously, I had too much water on my brush down there. That's why it, it ran like that. Just a little bit to get a little bit of paint color in there. And when you're finished, we're gonna put the vase aside to dry, and we're going to work on the flowers that go in the vase. For the flowers, you're going to need uh, your paper towel because we're using a thinner paper. The easiest way to make the flowers I found was to fold the paper in half a few times and then cut the them out in circles all at once. So we're going to take our piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, the smaller paper, which can also be printer paper. We're going to fold it in half, just like a card. And then we're going to take that and we're going to fold it in half again. And when we cut this out, this is going to give us four flowers at once. So I'm going to draw a little circle because we're going to do this in circles. You don't have to draw the circle or you can. You can just kind of wing it. And you're going to cut a circle in the size of about a chocolate chip cookie. Okay? And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle either. Okay, so I cut my circles and I have four of them. And now I'm going to show you how to make the flowers. And I'm gonna do them in ink also. You can do them in pencil or you can go right ahead and do them in magic marker. 
because when we color in the flowers, we're going to use about three colors. So pick three colors that look nice together. And I'm going to start by drawing the shape of the flower to show you. So it starts with a small circle in the middle, like this, so. And then we have narrow leaves, or narrow petals, I should say, going around that circle. Just like attached to those leaves, or coming out from those leaves, are more leaves, like that. And I'm going to continue to do that. So every time there's some petals, I keep calling them leaves, I'm sorry, they're petals, sticking out, I'm going to add another petal, like that, until I fill up the circle. So I'm going to fill it up just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on my other circles. And you can have as many flowers as you want. We only cut four, but you're welcome to cut more. And you can use as many or as little as you prefer. And I'm finishing up my last flower. I'm trying to work quickly for you, but you don't have to work as quickly as I do. You can take your time. And if you need to pause the video, you're welcome to do that. So if you drew your flower in pencil, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your first color and you're gonna draw on top of those lines that you drew in pencil. I don't have to do that because I started with ink. If you drew your flower in ink, you're gonna take your next color and you're not gonna color in with the marker, but you're going to outline again the flower, the petals on the flower with your next color. And I don't know if you could see that. I added some pink, and maybe if I add orange, it'll be easier for you to see. And I'm gonna do that with all three colors. I'm just gonna keep adding um, another outline until I have the three colors. Because what's gonna happen when I wet my marker this time, the colors are gonna blend together and they're gonna be really pretty. So you see, if you look closely, you can see I have the orange, but I didn't color anything in. I just kept following the lines of the petals. I have the orange and the pink and the red. So these petals are like U shapes almost. They look like the letter U. So I'm going back into each little petal and I'm making another petal with my next color, I'm making another U shape. And I'm actually doing that three times because I have three different colors. So again, I'm not coloring it in, I'm just keep adding more outlines, more of those U-shaped petals. With the flowers done, you're going to need to take out a piece of paper towel, not too much water, just a little bit on your brush, and you're going to paint right in the petals, and you're going to see that the marker is going to start to run and fill in those petals. So it looks like you're working with watercolors, even though you're not. And it just blends those flower petals together like that. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on my paper towel to dry while I finish doing my other. And as the water soaks into the paper, it'll make the paint run a little bit more. I'm actually going over the whole flower in a circular motion with my brush and then I'm going to put it aside to dry. Our chrysanthemums should be dry or close to being dry by now. And actually, these chrysanthemums in China represent nobility and excellence. They're a very popular uh, flower in China. We are going to take our vase, oops, and our glue stick. And first we're going to put the flowers around the vase and maybe we're gonna put one here and decide how you want your flowers to look coming out of the vase. And then we're gonna just glue them on with the glue stick. The microsanthemums are still a little bit damp, but that's okay. They'll still, they'll still um, be able to hold the glue from the glue stick and just glue them down in any way that you think looks beautiful. 
And then you have your beautiful Ming vase with your chrysanthemum flowers. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.